here they come now, the Bonehead Detectives. All right, now our search for the real T-Rex is going to take us into the fast lane. Yep, Detective Phil Curry says even though T-Rex was huge, he was actually a lot faster than people used to think. Hey, Phil, how fast was T-Rex? This animal is so big and so massive that for a long time, everybody thought that this had to be a slow-moving animal. In recent years, though, we've been looking more closely at the anatomy of the hind leg of these dinosaurs, and what we see is not necessarily what we expected to see. Now, in fast-moving animals like ostriches, the upper leg bone is relatively short compared to the lower leg bones. In Tyrannosaurus, we see the same kind of pattern. All in all, then, if we look at the characters that we see in the hind legs of Tyrannosaurus, I don't think there's any question at all that in spite of its massive size, this is an animal that was built for speed, and it's an animal that, in fact, could outrun any of its potential prey in its world. Now check out this guy doing his best T-Rex impersonation, hungrily hunting his prey. That's Jim Farlow. He's chasing emus and imagining what old T-Rex was like. It would be nice to know what Tyrannosaurus was like as a living animal, but it's very inconveniently extinct. And if you want to get a picture of how it moved, what it might have been like when it was alive, it's helpful to look at modern animals that give us an approximation to something like Tyrannosaurus. And of such modern animals, I think the emu is about as good a model as one could hope to find. I suspect it's probably faster than Tyrannosaurus was. An emu in the wild can go, what, uh, 50, maybe 60 kilometers an hour. Tyrannosaurus, obviously, we've no direct way of, of determining how fast it could go. But based on the calculations of the strength of its bones relative to the size of the animal, I would think that a, that a good ballpark figure for the top speed of Tyrannosaurus might be something on the order of 30, 40 kilometers per hour. Wait a minute. According to my magic metric converter, that's like 20 miles an hour. Wow, I can't even ride my 12 speed that fast. So we know T-Rex was fast, but that's not the only thing that made him scared. Yeah, T-Rex had a nose, ears, and eyes designed for destruction. Which brings us to the next question. What goes on inside that head? The skull of Tyrannosaurus is very narrow in the snout region, which allows the eyes to face forward, giving it stereoscopic vision. In addition to that, the ears themselves um, are located in such a way that they should be able to pick up sounds in particular directions. Uh, the ears may not look uh, very different from the other carnivorous dinosaurs externally, but internally there are a lot of changes that have taken place. This gives Tyrannosaurus rex a greater range of hearing capabilities, that is, the frequencies that it could hear were lower than what most other dinosaurs could. So, they could hear better. But how does that help T-Rex in his everyday life? Since Tyrannosaurus was probably hunting other dinosaurs, which were animals that probably made low sounds, the changes in the air would allow it to hear those animals better and to hunt them down. Run, little hadrosaurs! Run for your lives! When I look in the jaws of Tyrannosaurus rex, I have little doubt about its predatory capabilities. These are jaws that are meant to do some pretty nasty work. Like other carnivorous animals, Tyrannosaurus rex has teeth that are curved backwards. And at the same time, the tips of the teeth, in fact, curve towards the center of the mouth as well. What this means is that these teeth are specialized in such a way that if the prey is in the mouth and is struggling, uh, the only way for it to escape, really, is to go back further into the throat. Back into the throat? That doesn't sound like an escape to me. More like a dead end. Yeah, but don't get the idea that T-Rex had it easy. Right you are. Just listen to what Dr. Bob had to say about life in the Cretaceous. Here's a T-Rex, a male. Big guy. Look at these holes. These are wounds made by other T-Rexes. Here's a T-Rex tooth. Fits in there. Bite. Bite. Here's a bigger wound. Probably a triceratops horn went in there. Every T-Rex we dig has these wounds. And in life, these would be oozing with fresh pus. <laughs> but it gets worse. Around in the back. This is very scary. Here's the scruff of the neck of a T-Rex. And look at that bite mark. Somebody grabbed it and shook it like a rag doll. 
probably another T-Rex. Maybe its own mate. Every single big meat-eating dinosaur we dig is full of broken bones and punctures and gouges. They were gored by the plant eaters they were trying to eat. If you were a tyrant dinosaur king, you lived a short, violent life, and you died of multiple injuries, it was hard. It was painful. It was really, really tough. Man, that was nasty. Even for the king, life in the dino days was sure a pain in the paleo butt. But he was tough and could take it. If he was so tough, why isn't he still around today? Keep watching! For the close to our final mystery in the case, we're on our way back to the Badlands. This is where T-Rex had his final showdown. And it wasn't at the hands, or should I say horns, of Triceratops or a herd of nasty duckbills. It was extinction. And the question remains, why did the dinos go extinct? But out here, there's a woman who's been finding excellent clues. That's dino detective Beth McIver, and she thinks the answer is in the rocks. Cretaceous tertiary boundary um, is well defined in this outcrop right here where we've been digging. The tertiary is the time period right after the dinosaurs lived. And that's the Cretaceous tertiary boundary right here. See how the dirt changes color? But what does that tell us? It tells us that something very specific happened at that time, geological time. Something like a mega big, mega bad meteorite by any chance? That's what a lot of us think. Beth is uncovering evidence that points to some kind of mega major change on our planet. And whatever it was, it finished off T-Rex and his pals. Well, she should look at the fossil plants. The fossil plants below the boundary t tell us that th there were lush forests existing in this region and, and throughout the prairie regions that we know t as we know them today before the boundary. And right before the boundary, in some sediments that, that I have studied, we have a very typical cypress swamp, such as the bald cypress swamp that you would find down in southern parts of the United States. And above the boundary, there are no cypress trees. There's nothing in, the, in those remains above the boundary that tell us the cypress swamps was around. It was gone. So something happened at that boundary that was very dramatic. It leveled the forest. The standing vegetation was, was literally clear-cut, in a sense. And vegetation wasn't the only thing cut down in its prime. Every last T-Rex also died. But even though the meteorite theory makes for great special effects, it's not accepted by all the bonehead detectives out there. But we do know that about 65 million years ago, the meanest, nastiest king of the dinosaurs disappeared forever and ever. And on that note, I'd say it's time to close the book on the tale of Tyrannosaurus Rex. And the claws and teeth and all the other parts of him, too. Yeah, let's get back to the studio. It's safer. Because he's always there. Always watching. Ugh, that last look it gave me kind of freaked me out. Oh, don't worry, Sam. He safely paused. <laughs> well, Linda, you asked who was the real T-Rex, and I hope we all got to know him a lot better today. Thanks to Dino Ton for writing. So from his humble beginnings as a paperweight back in the early 1900s... All the way to the fame and glory he enjoys today, T-Rex was one killer dude. You know, I'm going to nominate him for the Bonehead Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Field of Dino Performance. Well, wait, wait a second. What about Detective Jim Farlow? Oh, come on. His impersonation of the T-Rex on the run was a performance for the ages. Well, open it. <clears throat> and the winner is... <gasps> Jim Farlow! Wait, who counted these votes? <laughs> Better luck next time, T-Rex. Hey, Eddie, did you have anything to do with this? Uh, see you soon. You guys are crazy to snub T-Rex. I hope he doesn't get mad. Old wimpy arms can't bully me. Jim Farlow deserved to win. He knows even more about T-Rex than Mrs. T-Rex. Yeah, but dude, man, T-Rex could eat Jim for brunch. If he could catch him. Jim could just jump on an emu and get away. Emus weren't around back then, doofus. So what? Neither was Jim Farlow. Mm, got a point. They don't call me Bonehead Sam for nothing.